It's Thursday, August 10th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, Lahaina on the island of Maui in Hawaii joins a short list of towns that have been completely wiped off the map by devastating wind-driven wildfire events. Here in Northern California, not far from the Blanco Lirio Global Headquarters, of course, we lost the town of Concow and Paradise in 2018. Over 19,000 structures lost, 11,000 homes, and to date, only about 1,200 homes have been rebuilt. Since then, we've also lost the towns of Greenville and Grizzly Flats. But the wildfire that happened in Lahaina reminds us that you don't necessarily have to be in tall timber country to have your home destroyed by these devastating wind-driven fire events. Let's go inside and see what we know so far about the events in Lahaina. Initial reports out of Lahaina are reporting 36 fatalities, 30 injuries, over 271 structures lost. These numbers, especially the structures numbers, are sure to grow. Most of the historic waterfront has been lost, including the harbor, the old banyan tree, and the historic Baldwin home located right up here. This is the before picture. Here's what the current conditions satellite view looks like or aerial view looks like over the historic part of downtown Lahaina. The banyan tree is still standing, but it is scorched and, and will not survive. Many of the boats in the harbor are either evacuated or burned up, and all of these structures. Once these wind-driven wildfire events get started, it is this river of flying embers, hot embers, that drive this fire and drive the fire into the wood structures. Once the hot embers get caught up underneath the eaves of the wood structure or the wooden decks of the wood structure or in foliage around the edge of the wood structure, that wood structure becomes fully involved, creating a whole nother shower of embers to march on to the next structure. That's why the devastation is so complete in these wind-driven events. Here's a wider view with the fire moving from left to right with the ocean over here on the right side of the screen. The fire is coming out of this light flashy fuel, grass fire basically, under extremely windy conditions. It will easily hop a small fire break like this road right here. The ashes and the hot embers just fly right over that and then start picking off these houses individually. Sometimes the embers hopscotch over and miss some houses and other houses get wiped out completely. And that fire was driven all the way out to the ocean. Here's a before and after Maxar satellite view just north of the historic district showing most all of these buildings in this area being destroyed by the fire and many of the buildings, if not most of the buildings in this area being destroyed by the fire. You can see now this, fire, this picture has been taken after the fire has blown through as this building is still burning, but the fires, the wind direction has begun to turn around. During the event, these winds were driving down slope towards the ocean. A before and after view just south of the historic district here by the rec center here the white ash in indicates that these buildings all in here and in here have been destroyed again the fire coming through the the fields located right here and into these structures here's an offshore view showing the terrain and the devastation of the harbor area and the historic waterfront this terrain this fire was driven by strong downsloping winds from this high terrain. Downsloping winds create a compression effect, compressing the air, heating it up, wind gusts exceeding 50 knots, blowing right into this town and causing all this destruction. The dry side of Maui is no stranger to wildfires. Back here on 2019, 10,000 acres burned. So what were the weather mechanics that drove this wind-driven event? Well, it was Hurricane Dora, which started off as a tropical disturbance over here in Nicaragua, gets caught up in the trade winds, turns into a hurricane, and marches just south of the Hawaiian Islands, located right here. Here it is on August 6th, coupled with a high-pressure area just to the north. So as we advance August 7, 
August 8, Dora is just south of the Hawaiian Islands, and this high pressure area is just to the north, creating an extremely windy event across Maui that got these fires going. If we zoom in close here on August 8th, we can begin to see a plume of smoke coming off of the zoom earth view. If we look at the surface winds here on windy today, Thursday the 10th of August, we can see the low pressure of Dora counterclockwise flow and the powerful high pressure just to the north with its clockwise flow creating the strong winds that blew through Maui during the wildfire event. I unfortunately can't go back in time on windy here to see exactly the winds during the time of the fire. But that's the mechanism that creates these powerful downsloping winds. When you take these winds with that local topography in those mountains and drive that wind over the mountains, they compress, they heat up, and it makes for explosive wildfire growth. What causes these fires? We don't know on this particular case, but what typically causes them out here in California and other places is when it gets so windy like this, usually power lines end up smacking together, causing a spark, and all it takes is one spark in that light flashy fuel, and that fire is off to the races. Preliminary reports are indicating that there was a small fire that they thought was under control. The winds blew that fire up and took it off to the races. Don't know what the original cause of that small fire was, but other common causes of these fires in wind-driven events are of some other form of nefarious human activity. The volcanic topography of Maui makes for extreme microclimates in a very short distance. The trade winds bring in the moisture onto the west side of the island where it rains almost continuously up to 200 inches per year. If you've ever visited Hana and that side of the island, how green and lush it is. But on the east side and southeast side of the island, it's almost desert-like with 0 to 10 inches per year, including over here by Lahaina. And if you've ever done the drive up to Haleakala, 10,000 feet, you'll see snow up there. Air Maui Helicopters was one of the first on the scene to document the damage here in Lahaina. As far as firefighting efforts go in these sort of situations, in these wind-driven events, there's nothing first responders or wildland firefighters or air attack or anybody can do to prevent the spread of this fire. All they can do is escape and evacuate safely. All you can do is get out of nature's way until the winds subside before you can even begin to fight a wildfire such as this. Here you can see the fire coming out of the light flashy fuels and into the structures down here. Even if Maui or Hawaii had the aerial assets that would be much too windy to deploy aerial assets, much too unsafe during this wildfire event, now helicopters with uh, Bambi buckets are beginning to drop water and are being deployed into the area to help put out hot spots. Now that the winds have begun to subside. Meanwhile, over here at Kahului Airport, uh, an airport I've flown into many times, the airlines are stepping up with additional flights to evacuate more than 11,000 tourists off of the island. They're either flying them directly back to the mainland or to other islands in Hawaii so they can make room for more first responders to deal with the wildfire, devastating wildfire situation in Maui, with Lahaina being one of three wildfires on the island. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.